Governor Borno State, Babagana Zulum, has blamed the Nigeria soldiers for the Sunday night attack by Boko Haram that killed over 30 stranded travelers. He stated that this tragic event occurred because there were no soldiers. He further said that several attempts have been made for the Nigerian military to establish their unit in Ono, where the attack happened, but nothing has been done to that effect. Joining me still to discuss this in the studio is Najib Bello and Smart Akbejoye, political analysts. What is your reaction to this sad, unfortunate incident? Mm. We've, we've been talking about some of the deficiencies of our military in um, in Borno State and the Northeast in general, what they lack is equipment. They lack equipment, they don't need as much men, they don't even have as much men as they would need to continue surveillance all over that area. So they need equipment, they need satellites, they need night vision, they need helicopters that will be going around, you know. But they don't have any of these things. And the federal government, for instance, now part of the loan Nigeria wants to borrow, they need $500 million for NTA. They want to borrow $500 million and give NTA, claiming that it's going to make NTA just like CNN. I don't understand that. But you are talking about soldiers that need equipment, surveillance equipment, CCTVs, and all of that, you cannot provide it for them. So this is a failure of not just the army, but even the federal government as a whole. Now, when it comes to the soldiers, they make themselves very predictable with their operations. Boko Haram is beginning to know that, oh, they close base at this time and they move back to the city at so-so time. So it provides a window for those terrorists to attack. When you have a certain time, soldiers will resume, even in Lagos here, it's funny, there are some places where buses, all these bus drivers and downfall drivers cannot park illegally because they know Lasma will be there at 7 o'clock. So from 5 a.m. to up to 7, they can park anyhow they like, they can do whatever they like, but once it's getting to 7 a.m., they start to get their act right. So when you have that kind of routine among security agents and other things, it provides an avenue for criminals to strike, and that's exactly what happened. We are happy that this governor... He's part of the people who are from the party that is ruling Nigeria. And we're happy that he's able to come out and tell the truth. That, uh, sorry, this thing is not working. Unlike the way they want us to he believe that. He did say that he has been pushed to the wall exactly, and he was going to say the exactly. truth. There are several, yeah. apart from this, you see, back in the day, in the mid-90s, in the early 2000s, it would be alarming for you to hear that 30 Nigerians were slaughtered in one night. The whole country will go haywire. But now you can hear 30, 40, 50 Nigerians at once, and everybody wants to remain calm. So I am happy that he's that kind of person that he will not sit and take all those kind of things. And he's bringing this out. Something needs to be done drastically. We need right. to upgrade our military operations, yes. equipment, everything. It's not NTA, $500 million to go and wake up a dead uh, horse or something, please. All right, now, smart, the, the Governor Babagana, he did allege that since his inauguration as the governor of Borneo State from May 29 to date, that this said town of Aono has been attacked for about six times now, and the reason is that the military has withdrawn from Aono town. What could have informed such a move by the Nigerian army? <sighs> My heart goes to the Nigerians that have lost their life senselessly by a less equipped, by a less trained militant group that call themselves Boko Haram. <clears throat> Equally, President Buhari said in one of his speech during the October speech, he said the southern, he said the, um, the eastern uh, leaders are to be blamed for not calling their hot-headed uh, son or this thing into order when they were when they were going about proclaiming IPOB or whatever. The same thing I'm talking about the Northern Ash today. For the Boko Haram, it is a, it is a it is it, it it is created by the Northern elites, by the Northern leaders, because they fail to do what they are supposed to do. And I tell you, the only way we can solve Boko Haram, if you like, spend one trillion dollars buying equipment for the military, it will not work. We have to go back to the basis. What is the basis? In the first place, you must emancipate people away from poverty. You must create, look, a sense of belonging 
in the in uh, 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 it must create a sense of belonging that they will know that the son of the Shewu of Bronu is the same thing as the son of the ordinary peasant farmer from Bronu. When you begin to create this, now you must begin you must be able to identify that this is not religion, this is not culture. The culture or the religion that says a 13 years old or a 12 years old girl can give birth because she had had her first circle and where nobody would take care of that child and that child will grow up in, in, a, in a very harsh environment, what else would you expect that child to be? All right. We have a whole lot of this thing. You see, fighting Boko Haram should be more of sensitization, education, number one. Because the more people are getting out, the more you are killing people, the more people are trooping in to be, be, oh. to be members of Boko Haram. Okay. So I don't want to first of all look at it from the equipment angle. Now, secondly, again, to tackle the issue of Boko Haram, you cannot begin to you cannot be doing the same thing and you expect this. And you expect oh, expect just hold on to your thought. Joining us via phone live this evening is former assistant director DSS Dennis Amakri. Thank you, Amakri, for joining us. Yeah, good evening. Yes. Now, um, 30 stranded travelers were killed, unfortunately, in a town in Bruno State. And the governor has come out to allege that this was as a result of the military being removed there, taking their base out of the town where this massacre occurred. How do you want to react to this development? Well, we know that um, we, we are fighting uh, um, uh, uh, an insurgency, a terrorist group, and uh, of course the addition of Ansaru, which is uh, in that area at this time, has been going around. The last attack we had uh, was uh, by this same Ansaru, not Boko Haram. But um, these are new challenges that are coming um, uh, facing the military at this time. Now, the governor said he had made repeated plea to the military to re-establish a, a base in Aono, as it's one of the flashpoints of Boko Haram, and that nothing has been done. What do you think could have informed the removal of this military base from the town of Aono in Boruno? What? Uh, informed the debate or something? Repeat that question, please. Now. The governor did say, he did allege that he had made several plea to the governor, to the government, the federal government and the military for them to return their base back to the town of Aono where this incident occurred. Now I'm asking, what do you think would have informed such a decision for the military base to be taken out of that town, knowing that it's a flashpoint where Boko Haram has always had their reprisal attacks? Well, you know that uh, the governor himself has uh, been very active since he came into power. Um, the last, uh, the one, uh, the last election. Uh, most of the governors of Borno State have not been very, very active, as as active as this one. Yeah, maybe he has been making some um, uh, 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 inroads, or uh, should I say, trying to persuade uh, the military or cooperate with them generally. And I think that should be encouraged. Um, if he's been frustrated. I think he knows where to go. I uh, should go down to Abuja, talk to the commander-in-chief, and see how they could arrange this thing properly. Oh, now, here was a concern, Amakri, before I let you go. Just another major concern. Still the same Bruno State government said they've released about 1,400 repentant, Boko, rehabilitated Boko Haram back into the society. Uh, does it, doesn't this in any way compromise the security for which the, the governor is calling for in the state? I am not in uh, support of that particular move. Uh, because um, how can you de-radicalize uh, 140 people and then, uh, you know, introduce them back into society? While uh, some of the people that they kill their families, their husbands and you know, children are still there mourning their children, still in IDP camp, and then you now release them into society. You know, I, I don't think that was a very good move. They should have waited or kept them for some time, uh, even if they feel that they have been radicalized. As far as I'm concerned, these guys can go back, uh, remain, uh, remain uh, on the ground as a, a sleeper cells, and then regenerated to cause more problems for, for us. You know, so people that are doing this have to think very seriously. 
Because these are the irregularities that causes problems. Where many people will say that, oh, in fact, uh, the government knows about uh, what's happening in Boko Haram. We cannot reintroduce these people. All right, Dennis Amakri, former assistant director, DSS, thank you very much for your contributions. Thank you very much. Now, doesn't this in any way compromise the security? Yes, the governor yes. is calling for releasing mm -hmm. repentant, 1,400 repentant, rehabilitated Boko Haram it's, it's, it's members. Really, it's, it's really unheard of anywhere. It's unheard of. These are people who have caused our soldiers to be beheaded. You, you, in a country where people are, senators are calling for a law to, to uh, declare to death sentence for someone who publishes uh, fake news or hate speech and all of that, yes. then you are in a situation where spies have given out information that led to massacre of our soldiers. You've seen videos of our soldiers, their dead body on yeah, the but, ground. Yeah, but they did say also that some of those people were arrested were suspected that they were not, most, some of them then were you not, cannot de were not, were not members of, of the group. They were, exactly. they were caught at the wrong place yes. at, at the wrong time. Yes. yes. That is why you have to separate the two groups. If you caught an innocent person and you lock that person up for several weeks or several months, you need to apologize to that person, compensate that person, and publish it to the public to know that these people were innocent and we made a mistake. We captured them and we thought they were terrorists, but after much, we've realized that they are innocent. Okay, we are letting them go and we are going to compensate them. But don't come and mix that up with real terrorists who have caused murder of our soldiers and innocent Nigerians and now say you've de-radicalized them. If I were one of those um, innocent suspects being released and you say I'm de-radicalized, I will sue you for a billion naira. You can't tell me you de-radicalized me when you wrongfully arrested me. So I did suspect that there were people like that. And okay. I said it from the beginning years ago that some of the people being captured by our soldiers, police, as Boko Haram members, they may be innocent. Sometimes all it takes is for one neighbor to go and point to you, someone who never liked you, to go and point to you and say, oh, this is this guy is among them. Sometimes they kill you straight up. That's why I never support that whole thing that, oh, you can just see Boko Haram members or suspected Boko Haram members and shoot at them. But now when you've arrested some people and you found out that, oh, we made a mistake, then you need to ask for forgiveness, you need to compensate them, and you need to publish it and make, let everybody know that Usman, Yakubu, and so-so put their pictures up. Okay. They've been in detention yeah. for so-so-so. We were wrong. We mistakenly wrong took them. And, exactly. Yes. But these other people who were part of a terrorist group, whether you were just an informant or you were actually a soldier, a, 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 one of the um, fighters of this group, no matter what, you must go to court. You must be tried for your crimes and your punishment must be given All right, smart, I'm going to, I'm to, going to come to you and take your thoughts on this now. I mean, was this a smart move by the Bono State government? First, in the first place, let me say, if we continue to fight Boko Haram with soldiers, we will never win the war. With my little background on security, it is not the soldiers that will win the war. You see, we have the SSS that I know, popularly known as DSS. Those days, you can never, you can, you can never know a DSS man because you will not even identify him. A DSS man that is employed today might not even be carrying the ID card of a DSS man. He might even be carrying the, the, the ID card of a Ministry of Agriculture person, or he might even be carrying the the ID card of someone that works in the local government. And all he does is that the moment they employ him after the training, they deploy them to all various local, for all, all, all various local government nooks and cranny. They could just say, you go and set up a, go and set up a newspaper vendor or whatever and be selling paper in that place. You go and be selling food. You go and be doing this one. And you see some of these ladies selling food at a makeshift canteen in some of these villages. They are SSS personnel. But what do you now have? You now see the DSS now that is wearing branded T-shirts, DSS, carrying submachine gun. Ha! <laughs> we have degenerated, though. All right, we smart. Can never fight. We can never win this war like this. Smart, we must go back to the basis. Najib Bello, thank you very much for your contributions on Plus Politics. Thanks for this having evening. me, Benny. <laughs> and thank you for staying with us. We'll take our Plus report now. And when we return, I'll be giving you my take. Do stay with us.
The House of Representatives Committee on Finance has uncovered a monumental fraud amounting to several billions of naira, yet to be remitted into the nation's coffers by the Petroleum Product Pricing and Regulatory Agency, PPPRA. The House Committee on Finance, while drilling the Managing Director of Finance of the agency, said about 500 million naira was left unremitted into the Consolidated Revenue Fund in 2014 alone. The chairman of the committee, Honorable Abiodun Faleke, described the act as a ripoff of the nation's treasury and threatened severe sanctions. It's either you're hiding facts or you're not competent. I will recommend appropriately on when we finish with you. Because what we are not getting fast from you, you are sitting on Nigeria's money. We are here because Nigeria is unable to fund its budgets. Capital budgets, 30 percent, 20 percent. But here, you are funding every, every aspect of your expenses. And we are asking you questions, you are hiding facts. What we want is a system where Nigeria will be able to have money to fund its budgets. If every agency like yours is able to keep away 501 million every year from their income, from their revenue, then what's the essence? As it is, they are not ready for us. Whatever volume that is imported or produced, payments are, do not come in as at when due. From who? The marketers and NNPC. We don't receive those monies as at when due. That is why it is difficult to match what is expected uh, inflow uh, and, and then matching it with the this volume budget. Now, for the remittances, we the do the remittances quarterly. And this is my take. While Agba Jalingo is seen to be detained for his critical opinions and allegations on the governor of Cross River State, I think both the, rivers, the Cross River government and the federal government are to note that he that comes into equity must come with clean hands and not be perceived as collaborating through the manipulation of the criminal justice system to keep him behind bars for personal vendetta. Jalingo's trial has been described as one that falls short of international standards of fairness especially because the court has allowed witnesses to be maxed and a trial to be held in secret. Governor Ben Ayade of Cross River State and the government of President Mahmoud Buhari must stop filing bogus and politically motivated charges against critics and start listening to what they have to say by respecting court orders and the rule of law. And while we commiserate with the people of Bruno State on this unfortunate incident, we have to continue to highlight the insecurity in the country, which has read an unacceptable crescendo. Declaring a state of emergency on it appears not only necessary, but also needed. And this is a call on the Nigerian military, the federal government and all its security agencies to use whatever means possible to arrest this descent into anarchy. Nigeria cannot continue like this with the blood of the innocent being shared unjustly and human security being at its lowest ebb. Let this hydra-headed monster of insecurity be tackled actively and proactively with the full weight of Nigeria's security and defense capacity. And that's a wrap, plus politics returns tomorrow by 7 p.m. Be well.